So I will also throw up the um, attendance for you all. Um, let me start sharing my screen. You guys can all see that, yes? Awesome. Okay. I think we can get started. So we are doing directing today, which we are very excited. It's a nice little um, like follow up meeting sort of to our assistant directing meeting, which we had a few weeks ago. Um, we definitely spent a lot of time on directing last semester. So this is going to be more of the nitty gritty, which is like I guess what we've been into a lot more this semester is just like going in a little bit more in depth, talking specifically about um, forms, spreadsheets, you know, that sort of stuff, what you need to know. Um, and Eric is going to be leading this meeting today, which we are so excited for. Um, did everyone get the attendance? Yes. Oh, I know someone just came in. I'm gonna leave. Okay, I'm going to move on to the woman of the week. We have Jennifer Kent, who is a very influential woman. She has worked on a lot of films that involve female issues, um, talk about things that aren't widely, or I guess, yeah, aren't super widely accepted in the film industry to talk about as blatantly as she does. But she's an Australian actress and director. She's best known for her directorial debut, which was a horror film. Um, Babadook, that's I think how you pronounce it. I haven't seen it just because I'm not the biggest horror fan. I get really scared <laughs> um, easily, but I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's really neat that this was her first film that she actually debuted and it like basically put her in a very top tier spot um, in the industry. Then her second film, The Nightingale, um, explores sort of the epidemic of rape, um, which is something that not a lot of films have explored. Um, it's pretty graphic and it premiered actually at the 75th Venice International Film Festival. So she's definitely someone to look out for. Um, she's very cool and um, yeah, I definitely think someone to look out for. Um, and Marley, I saw that you just put in the chat the um, attendance scan thing. So I'm just going to go back right now. If you can grab that. Just let me know when you have scanned it. Yeah, I just got it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Of course. Um, OK, so we are going to pass the mic off to Erica and let her have fun. <laughs> Okay, so this is my first time leading a meeting. Um, so I'm a little nervous, but I shouldn't be nervous because all of you are wonderful and amazing. So there's no reason for that. But we're going to start off with talking about what do you think of when you hear the word director, it can be a word, a person, a phrase, a sentence, you can type it or you can speak it, whatever you're comfortable with. And then we'll just kind of talk about that for a second. So do your thing. If anyone has anything to say. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop the share so we can all look at each other's faces when we talk. <laughs> Bringing creative vision to life, Riley says, love that. I feel like for me, it's like the boss on set, like the director's the person who's like running the show. Final say, yeah, for sure. Um, as someone who is more <laughs> like on the act <laughs> Julia, as someone who's more like on the acting side of things, definitely someone who like tells me what to do and kind of guides, you know, my you know, guides my way when I'm acting. So I think what a lot of us think is uh someone in a position of power, a lot, a lot of power, and that's kind of um the overarching theme of today is that you know. The director is in a lot of power and a lot of times we see it portrayed as like 
a man yelling at people. Um, and, you know, we want to be the people to change that, right? So we, as Women in Motion, you know, we can make that change as women directors and changing the narrative. And, ooh, let's see. The director is the king. The direct, okay, I love that, Sarah. Director is the queen. That, that is so great. Um, yeah, so we just as women directors, you know, we wanna change that narrative and make us think about strong women directors when we think of directors. All right, you can go to the next slide. So we're gonna talk about looking at the script as a director. So when you get handed the script from your wonderful screenwriter and you need to look at it and you need to decide um, how to bring it to life, right? So you need to break it down to the fundamentals and visualize what you want to do to bring it to life, scene by scene, or maybe even line by line, maybe even word by word, honestly, it can be that specific. Um, and you can ask yourself questions like what emotions, tones, purpose, and subtext of the scene, what can you emphasize, you know, the visuals, the performance, the exposition, the world building, that's always so fun is world building. <laughs> um, and how can you show those things visually, right? Because the screenwriter just gave you this beautiful text, but and how can you make it on the screen something as wonderful as that? I also think this applies to um, writer directors as well. Like I know a lot of us, especially at Emerson, tend to like write something and then direct it ourselves. That tends to be something that also happens in the industry. But this is very helpful even when you've already written it and spent so much time to kind of just like switch your brain off from the writing side and go to the directing side and be like, what was my purpose when I was writing this? Like, what what was I trying to get across? And then how to translate it onto the screen? So I think like, even if you aren't getting a script from a screenwriter um, and you already did put so much effort and work into it and know like the back to front super duper well, this is something that you can kind of just do maybe after you've even taken a little bit of time from your writing, just like you come back to it and focus on it as a director rather than as a screenwriter. Yeah, it's definitely a different way to view it, you know, different mindsets. Um, you wanna go next? So um, there's these two different types of directing, obviously not the only types, just uh, when you're working with actors. Um, so this performance-based directing focuses on your actors as the main part where you work with them in the rehearsals and then you take how their flow is and you build your shot list around that um and then the so like it says the camera's going to accommodate for the actress um it can be unpredictable and it can take up more time uh if you are focusing on what your actor is going to do rather than what you already wrote down which goes into the camera based directing um so that's you know you write down all the shots you want before you get there before rehearsals and then the actress is going to accommodate to you um, so, you know, people can choose between the two, whichever one you like more. I did work on this with Julia Kerr, who is not here, and she actually preferred the performance-based one, and I preferred the camera-based one. Um, it's really different for everyone, and like it says at the bottom, you know, you can find a balance between the two, um, and it's really important to do that, uh, but you have to find whatever works for you. So another thing about working with actors is you need to have a conversation with them about their characters, their motivations, their objectives, their obstacles, and their turning points. You are there for them and they are there for you. So you have to work together. Um, and that actually on the next slide, it kind of goes more into that. Um, taking care of them. So I had this change the stereotype of the angry director. Um, I think that it is important that we show um, our actors that we care about the work that they're doing for us. Um, they are there to bring your vision to life, right? So you wanna make sure that you're treating them with respect um, and you know, then you'll get that respect back. And um, I know we've talked about this many times before, but there is that the class um, directing, what is it, they're directing the actors class. Um, so, and I think that's important to know um, what it's like to be on the other side, because otherwise, how are you gonna give them directions that they can understand? Um, 
And if they aren't happy, you aren't going to be happy. So it's really just a big teamwork effort of making sure everyone knows what's good for them. And um, yeah, and this was just like really important to me about this idea that like the director is always yelling and making people cry. And I'm like, that, that can't be what people think of. It has to be like a strong person doing good and making art. And that was something I wanted to get across. Yeah, I also think like one thing I'm in directing image and sound this semester. And one thing that my teachers also talked about is like giving your actor direction that they can understand. So instead of just saying like, be more sad, like that's not going to help someone be more sad. And there's a lot of different methods for how to do about that. One way is to like make them think of a time in their life when they were really sad and that can harness those feelings. You also do have to be careful in that situation though, not to bring up like too extreme feelings. Um, there's also a way to like make them run through with their other actor and try and build emotion there. Um, and I know one thing that he really talked about that I think really made me understand better how to direct actors is give them the action that they're doing. So like in kind of in their whole life, like as the character, what's the action they're continuing to do? but what do they really need underneath? So like he gave an example of Trump and he's like, what's Trump's action? Trump's action is to always win like over and over and over again. But what Trump really needs is probably just to be like loved and like, like genuinely loved, which, you know, controversial example, but like it kind of stuck in my head. I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Like if you tell them what they're doing, and then underlying what they actually need. That's a really great way to put your actor in the space for how they know they need to portray this character. And also like, obviously at Emerson, it's a little bit hard to have a ton of pre-production and rehearsals like that can go really in depth, but it's really great sometimes to give your character, like if you've written the script or if you've talked with the screenwriter, like the whole backstory like what happened in your character's childhood what brought them to the point that they're at now so you can understand what they've been through and as a director you should be aware of that you shouldn't just know what's on the script you know what comes off first read through you need to understand exactly everything that goes into this character and all the layers that make it who it is yeah i had a um a professor for a screenwriting class and he had us do a sim similar thing where we would um watch scenes or um dissect scripts where he would make us list out the text and the subtext um, and find out their like real motivations and we would write these like crazy lists of motivations that these characters might have that we really didn't know anything about um, and that could be a really helpful exercise because you can just make make stuff up while you're watching these things what makes these people tick why are they doing things like this because as a director you need to know those things. And also talking about like costuming and makeup, that's also a way that you can take care of your actors and put them into that space in that character. Like say you're a king and you just feel like you need a robe and a crown to get yourself in that headspace. If you, the, as the director, let your actor wear a crown and a robe the entire time you're all on set so they just are in their king-like character that's a great way to put them into the personality they need to be on stage and also just kind of makes them feel cool like you know getting them in that headspace putting them in the costume is a great way to put someone where they need to be when the cameras are actually rolling Good. Yep, there you go. Okay, so working with the DP, so the director and the director of photography, they will create a shot list through a series of conversations, keeping in mind multiple factors. So what do you need to see? What elements of the story do you want to use to tell? And what are the production's limits? You know, uh, like it says, you don't have a drone or a crane, you can't do those high up flying shots, or maybe you don't have a, um, a track and you can't do any tracking shots. I don't know. But um, this kind of goes back to that first slide that was talking about um, those questions you can ask yourself. You'll ask, you'll ask yourself these things again um, when you're coming up with the shot list. So I think the next slide is the example. Yes, this is Julia's beautiful example of a shot list. Um, so all of these things are really important to have before going into shooting and um, you know and it helps you plan out exactly what 
whatever you're making is going to look like. So you have um, on the shot numbers, that's going to be your so scene A, or sorry, yes, <laughs> scene one, <laughs> and then um, A, and then, you know, B, C, sort it out, um, however many shots you need of each scene. Um, and then you'll have, you might have 1A, take one, 1A, take two, you know, that's going to go on um, for however many times you need it. So we've got the distance, we've got a wide shot, a medium shot, over the shoulder shot. Um, and then, you know, who's in the scene, who do you need to see, um, what kind of lens you're using. And uh, we have equipment listed here, which, you know, that can be important <laughs> to have listed. Um, and then the description is um, really important because you want to make sure you have exactly what you need. Um, another important thing is with the shot list is it helps you save time. Um, if you know that you only need to shoot one coverage of one part of the scene, you don't need the whole scene, then you're gonna take, you're gonna write that down. Like we only need from this line to this line. And then suddenly you have a bunch more time because you didn't shoot the whole scene in that from that one angle, um, which is why planning it out would be really important. One thing about shot listing that I know I've run into that's really hard is it's like trying to get all of your creative thoughts onto something that's super formulaic. And I know like I'm someone who really loves looking at shot lists because they're very easy to read. But when you're the one actually making it, it's so hard because you're like, wait, I know I have this part of the script. I love these lines. Now let me try and like actually think about how it's going to look and it, the exact equipment, the exact timing, like all of these little things that you have to think about that when you're maybe a director or even a director of photography and you're looking through and you're just like, oh, I can visualize this, but actually having to write out what you have to do is really, really hard. But at the same time, if you didn't have a shot list, everything would be chaotic. Like you would not be able to get anything done whatsoever. I mean, maybe prove me wrong, maybe you would, but like, it's very, very hard to get the coverage you need and to put something together nicely and have something for your editor to work with without a shot list. Um, another thing that I've been doing recently, I am in intro to TV production, which I love very much and directing for live TV, it's very different, but I have been having to make shot lists um, a lot. And something that I've been doing is just printing out my scripts and kind of scribbling all over them with like what I picture at each line. And then I put it into the spreadsheet. Um, I think it works a little bit better with my brain and maybe that would work with some of you too. You know, you're kind of going line by line and like, okay, this is what I see here. This is what I see here. And then you can put it into the formulaic sheet, like Emily was saying, like uh, how everything has to be listed out very seriously and in order. And also if you're a director that's like focusing more on performance, sometimes you just give this to your DP and you say, can you do the shot list? I'll look at it after and work it all out. Um, kind of whatever your directing style is. I've done it both ways where I've just given it to my DP, had them do a shot list. I've had it where I've done the shot list just all by myself. I've had it where I've collaborated. It works um, many different ways. Um, I just think it depends, especially on exactly what you are shooting and whether you want it to be a lot more like performance heavy and it's going to rely a lot more on the actors or if it's going to rely a lot more on the visuals and the camera work. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna have four breakout rooms um, and each group is going to have a different page from the first four pages of When Harry Met Sally. They are um, different scenes. They kind of cut to different scenes on each page but that was the easiest way to break it up. So um, just pretend that the page you have is a scene and you will use that blank shot sheet that we just showed you and you're each going to work in a different section of it so there's four there should be four sections four scenes and one page is going to be one scene um, so you and your group can come up with a shot list your ideas um, for what you would shoot if you were shooting when harry met sally and um if you don't have any ideas for like what to write down you know you can just like think about it like oh i'd want to shoot it this way um, but you know, give it a try if you can. So, so you know. everyone, please scan this because obviously we oh, yeah. don't have access to this when you guys go into the breakout rooms. Um, just keep them up 
um, and then pay attention to what your breakout yeah, I'll drop the is. share link in the chat too. Okay, cool. Pull it up. Um, and then pay attention to what your breakout room is, as that will correlate with your page number. So if you're group number one, you'll be page number one on the example script. Um, just everyone give me a thumbs up when you've scanned both of these things and then I will stop sharing and create breakout rooms. Or actually, I think I can create breakout rooms right now. It'll be that spiffy. <laughs> there you go. Um, Okay, so I'm going to create four and I think... don't send them yet because I am going to share the link for the shot list and the chat will go away. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I just want to um, share that. My computer just works at a half speed these days. So, <laughs> you know, got to work with that. All right. And here is the shot list. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna wait, make sure everyone opens these up on their other tabs on their computer or their phone. And then everyone thumbs up when they have everything that they need. Great. Okay. On to breakout rooms. I'm gonna open all the rooms. Please pay attention to your um, title of your breakout room. How'd that go? Good. <laughs> awesome. Great. Um, so we're still waiting on one more room. But I think Erica, would you want to like talk about it? We can share, we can share everyone's sure. ideas. <laughs> Do you want to um pull the document up on the shared screen or should we just talk about it? Um or I guess we could just talk about it. Okay. Um, but, unless, wait, was it being put on? Yeah, uh, everything should have been put into the same document. If, oh, cool. Then I can just um, share that. I'm not oh. sure if it worked out that way or not, but that was the goal. It's not scene two and four on here, so. <laughs> I think um, we put ours in a separate document. Oh, okay. A copy of it. Okay, no okay. worries. We can just, we can chat about it then. Okay. Um, did anyone have any inspiration strike them about uh, this movie, like a shot that you were like, yes, this is a great idea? Or was that harder for anyone or easier for anyone than they expected? It definitely made me a lot less freaked out to make shot shades, like it just kind of made it less scary, which it sounds stupid, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's good to hear. <laughs> I don't think it sounds stupid. I think it sounds like a very real thing. Not to put Emily H on the spot, but she came up with a very great idea for an extreme close up of, of Harry and Amanda's eyes as they're sharing longing looks. And that like, uh, she came up, she said the idea, I was like, yes, that would be perfect. So I don't know. That was like just one of those moments where you're like, you know that it, it would work really well. Anyone else have any inspiring thoughts or anything? <laughs> Anyone come up? Okay, what was their favorite shot that they came up with? How about that? I was in that group as well. And I also liked the extreme close-up. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, we can move on. I hope everyone took that as a nice little lesson for how to do it. I also would recommend just like doing shot lists, shot lists for all the scripts that you make or for any sort of class projects because it just makes it a lot easier and makes this process way less scary. As you were saying, Riley, it definitely is a little bit daunting until you actually go for it and do it. And it's sometimes even better just to do it for like a small project 
rather than like a ginormous set that you're working on, especially if it is your first time. I also think if you're really interested in assistant directing, it's also a great idea to work a lot with shot lists because that's something that assistant directors have to do. They have to take that shot list and turn it into a schedule. So it's really something that everyone uses. If you're interested in lighting, it's really good to know the shot list as a gaffer as well. So you know all your lighting setups that you're gonna have to do. Even as PD, it's really important to know your shot list. It's kind of just like the rule book for how everything's going to go on set. So I think it's a great idea to make sure that you know how to do a shot list, how to read a shot list, because they're definitely like little like um, in the way that you describe what type of shot it's going to be like a close up is um, uh, shorthanded for CU. Um, so different things like that to get a little bit more used to, but you can look those up online as well. Um, okay. Anything else, um, Erica, that you wanted to bring up? Okay, so we are going to move on and this is like a weird transition. I don't really know how to do this effectively, um, but we kind of had um, the board and I were talking um, just about like what it's like to be a director and how a lot of the times we stereotype or think like most of the time it's men, a lot of times it's white men. Um, and that kind of got us thinking about women in motion in general. And we wanted to just kind of reach out to you guys, talk a bit more about us in terms of like diversity and what you're enjoying about the club, what you think you, it needs to change, just sort of like a mid-semester check-in. Um, we're really trying to focus on empowering women, obviously, but we also want to put out um, and say like, we also want to try and create our club in a more inclusive way, be more diverse. And we want to just get some of your guys's feedback on that. So if you all could scan this QR code, um, we are going to do just like a little thing. Um, it's called Mentimeter. Thank you, Kat, for bringing this to light. Um, but it's a great way to um, just uh, not like have an anonymous space where we can all um, say what we want to say and it just shows up on the screen and we can kind of talk about it in that way. Um, let me share this. And you can also um, go to menti.com and then put in that code on the top. Um, so I just wanted to start off by saying, how would you describe women in motion? Um, that's something that I think is a good way to get us rolling. Um, what does women in motion mean for you all? Um, see some words here that it's community, supportive, informative, safe, sisterhood, safe space, um, learning community. I love that. I definitely see community and safe space as like a common thread, not judgmental, supportive. Awesome. Well, I definitely think like for me coming to Women in Motion before before now, um, when I started as like a tiny little freshman, I was like, I have no friends. I don't know what to do. And like Women in Motion was that place where I was like, okay, these are my people. Like I can hang out here. And it like felt really nice to have that. And I know, especially being virtual, it's a little bit harder to like make that sense of community. So I'm really glad to hear that that's still a thread that we um, have going on. Fun. Yes. Helpful. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, okay. We want to also get, wait, did I go too far? I don't think so. Okay. Um, I also just want to ask what is something women in motion could improve upon? as something that we would like to know about because obviously we're always trying to make the club better for our members because that's what we're here for. We're not targeting our board members, you know, we're targeting our regular members who come all the time, who show us all of our support and make our meetings fun. Um, if there's anything you guys think we could improve on, um, please type it in just so we can talk about it. Working with more people across campus. Yes, I completely agree with that. I think we could totally partner with a lot more organizations, especially looking for people who maybe write scripts or actors, um, do a lot of more things with clubs that are maybe not just women based or female identifying, um, working with other people, working with clubs such as like Flawless Brown and stuff like that to promote other women 
um, clubs or women-centered clubs. Um, show more examples from Emerson sets or professional sets. I love that idea. I think that's something I know we try and talk about because a lot of us have had experience on sets, but we could also bring like pictures or like bring our own shot lists and stuff like that from things we've done. Joining forces with other orgs. Once again, I totally agree with that. Hands-on workshops. Yes, I wish that was a thing. I miss hands-on workshops so badly. Um, that's definitely something I'd love to bring back at some point. Advertising audition opportunities from around Emerson. Awesome. I love whoever brought that up because I think that's a great idea. Um, I think that's something we've tried to do a bit more in terms of our um, Women in Motion Facebook group is make those uh, space to have auditions, but I definitely think we could be a club that is uh, constantly filtering through and actually posting it up there rather than just leaving it up to other people. So I think that's something we could definitely do. More opportunities to collaborate and work together. Yes, I agree. Obviously, like more of a post-COVID world would be ideal to do that. That's kind of why we're doing our short film projects. So that leaves space to do that. Um, more guest speakers. Absolutely. I'm glad you guys said that. Um, I was unsure if you guys all liked the guest speakers because I know we've been doing it and we've gotten like about five or six people who come to every other meeting. So I wasn't quite sure if that was like something you guys were gung ho for. So that's good to hear about that. We'll definitely continue that. We definitely have a couple documentary guest speakers who are going to be coming up, um, which will be exciting. Um, some more social aspects would be fun. Yes, I completely agree. Um, I think I'm planning a game night, which I think would be fun. We could do a Women in Motion game night and just get to know each other a bit more. Um, I also know like our movie nights was kind of a space to do that and meet each other, but movie nights are always hard to coordinate, especially when they're virtual. So if anyone has any ideas for how we can do more social fun activities that unfortunately have to probably be over Zoom unless we wanna like all secretly meet up and get boba and be like, we didn't, what, you're here. I didn't know that, that sort of thing. I would be down to do that. Um, yes, um, also female, uh, let me just see this. Female spaces are so, so important. There are male allies that are willing to use their privilege or amplify women's voices, maybe consider a few male members every semester, yes. Agreed. We do not turn away male members. We just never get male members. So I think that's something that we want to focus on. I know past few semesters, we've definitely had a couple more uh, male members. I think two semesters ago, we had about like three to four guys that were here. And it was almost like a uh, breath of fresh air because they're like, we want to help you guys. Like we're here to be supportive for you. So I think that's something we should work on and just target. And I know I've talked to some of my guy friends and been like, you want to come to Women in Motion? Like, you'll love it. And they're like, uh, maybe. And I'm like, no, do it. Like, it'll be fine. We're just fun. So I think like maybe promoting it also to any male identifying students that you guys know is a great way to do that. It's just kind of hard when our title is Women in Motion. It tends to, you know, uh, <laughs> lend itself towards one group, but we obviously do not discriminate against men coming to our meeting at all. Anyone have anything they want to talk about in terms of improving on anything? Um, I can't see all of you. So if you have something, just like speak out. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go to the next slide. OK, awesome. Um, OK, so this is kind of our biggest thing that we want to talk about is how can women in, mo in motion improve diversity within the club. We've definitely noticed that when we were looking at um, the alumni event that we're doing, the 30th anniversary roundtable, we were like, wow, all three speakers we have are white women, which is fine, but it's definitely something that we'd like to bring up as we're trying to bring more diversity into this group. And we obviously want to create an inclusive community for those people, for any people who want to come, which I think as of now, we're really wanting to partner with other orgs that focus on that in order to get them part of what we do and us part of what they do. Um, but does anyone have specific ideas for how we can improve diversity? Um, ways that would make this space feel even better for people of color, for anyone?
this is super like off but maybe um i know that there's like a couple of um um people like um comedy troops centered around like um women of color i think it's flawed comedy so maybe we could focus like i know that um they do a lot of like video sketches especially now COVID. So maybe like offering that like maybe some editing stuff that could be a cool thing awesome yeah thank you so much emily i definitely think that's a great idea um, I reached out to a couple, um, I'm waiting, I was like, okay, I not, I gotta go reach out to a bunch of orgs, like, let me just mass email everyone, so I'm waiting to hear back from them, but I definitely think, like, taking it from other people who have put that as the center of their club, rather than, like, trying to do it ourselves, because it's really good to learn from people who know how to focus on that, who know how to create a safe space, and then we can um, be involved in that and collaborate with them. Anyone else have any ideas? If you click the arrow, there's another one. Oh, amazing. Thank you, Kat. Making our stances very clear and make sure people know this place is safe for everyone at Emerson. Yes, I completely, completely agree with that. And I think, especially being on the board, we always talk about it. It's like we're never pushing people away, but at the same time, we can very blatantly say that we are a safe space for every single person and we want to make sure that everyone knows that they can be included in women in motion it's not just targeted for women it's not just targeted for white women at all we want to be available for every single person on campus no matter how they identify no matter who they are we really want to be that safe space because i feel like we have fostered an amazing community and from the words that you were guys were saying on the first slide like this is a safe space it's a community it's fun it's helpful um, and that's what we want to be for every single person who wants to show up to Women in Motion. Awesome. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, this is just sort of a, anything else you would like to add, any other questions, comments, um, just so we know. I think it's always good to do a little mid-semester check-in just so we're making sure everyone is feeling comfortable here. Um, anything maybe you'd like to see, any guest speakers you want us to bring along, um, anything like that. Oh, I didn't, that's cool. I didn't know you could mark his answer, wow. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I would love to hear more from any of you guys. If you have anything specifically you'd like to bring up with us, maybe in more of a private setting, um, please feel free to email us. We are always checking our email. Uh, if you'd like it even more private than that, email us and just say, I'd like to meet with you guys one on one in a Zoom. We are always here to talk with you all. Um, and at our board meetings, like everyone on the board can talk about this and speak to this. We very much try to hash out how we can make women in motion as safe and comfortable for every single person. So it's something we're very much working towards. We want everyone to feel really good about where they are in women in motion. I know I feel really excited about creating a safe space, the safe space we already have and already have made and then continuing that progress into the future. Um, so thank you all for doing that. I think that's always a nice way to just check in with everyone. Any other comments before I move it on to like just the events that we have um, for the rest of the week? All good? Okay, awesome. So let me get my slide back up. Um, okay. So some events for the this week, um, we have our Women in Motion 30th anniversary roundtable, which we did say last week, but we're going to keep promoting this every single week just because we want you all to come. It's on the 25th at 9.30 p.m. We have these three speakers confirmed already. Um, a lot of uh, execs of different companies. Um, I'm really excited. We've been getting a lot of your guys' questions on the Google form. And the way that it's going to kind of run is we're going to have 
the speakers introduce themselves at the beginning. Then we're going to go into breakout rooms that are going to be specific to what your interests are. So if you are interested in directing, we'll try and pair you up with a speaker that's done directing or something like that. So you can specifically ask questions one on one. Then we'll bring it back to the whole group, do a Q&A using those questions you guys put in your Google form um, and anything else you may want to ask during the time. So that's sort of how it's going to run. Um, I Zoom links, yes, will be sent through emails. We are collecting everyone's emails on the Google form and then we'll send you all the Zoom links. Also, this is a networking event, so I would really recommend dressing up just a little bit, maybe not showing up in a hoodie or your PJs, unless that's how you would show up to an interview, but kind of treat this as like a space where you're going somewhere. It's not just on Zoom, like you're actually meeting these people. Um, it's a really great space because these people are specifically looking to mentor and talk to Emerson students. So they are here because they reached out to us because they're like, we want Emerson kids and we want to talk with them. Also, as you all probably know, Emerson has such a great network. So a lot of times when you go into the industry, people are hiring you because you went to Emerson and because they went to Emerson. So this is just a little bit of like a step before that just to get to know these people get your name out there um make sure you have maybe just a little um like i don't know 30 second elevator pitch or something about yourself just in case they ask you what you're interested in what you want to end up with um in the in your career so we're really excited for this and it's coming up in about a week so look forward to it um and next we are also looking for a new board member next semester so we're going to be doing switcheroo i will not be president next semester i will probably just be what julia kerr is now as like a random student advisor that just hangs around that'll be me um but we want to bring someone else onto the board um we're not exactly sure what position that will be yet it's definitely one of the ones that is already standing as a position um, but we're not quite sure where the rest of the board members are going to move around. If you're specifically interested in like something on the board, like if you're interested in marketing, marketing or doing secretary work or treasury or something, like we would totally take that into account when considering your board member. But just email us. You can talk to us at the end of this meeting, at the end of any of our other meetings. Um, we usually just like talk to people and if they seem interested, then we will add them onto our board. So that's something that's really great. You get to put on your resume, you get to be a part of a board of a organization, which is really cool. So if any of you are interested, please email or stay behind and talk to us and we'd love to consider you for the position. Um, then Jillian, I'm going to pass this over to you, but basically she contacted us and was like, I want to do a cool profile story on one of um, the members from Women in Motion about their experience as a filmmaker and doing short film projects. But Jillian, do you want to talk more about what you're looking for? Yeah. Hi, everyone. So if you don't know me, um, my name is Jillian and I am a journalism student here at Emerson who is focused on going into the entertainment industry and writing it that way. And I am looking for someone who is directing or writing or even just involved in a short film project from Women in Motion. It doesn't have to be specifically Women in Motion, but I think you'd be a great um, way to kind of frame the piece from being in this club. And so I would just need a couple hours of your time um, at some point uh, to kind of write about you and get to know you and who you are and what you do as a filmmaker, um, kind of write about your experience at Emerson, your plans for the future. Um, it would just be all about you. So if you love to talk about yourself, um, this is a great opportunity. And yeah, so um, this is for my intro to magazine writing class. So um, yeah, it would be great. I would need just a couple hours of your time. I'd probably um, contact someone who's close to you, maybe some friends or family also to have them talk about you and kind of what you're into, what, you know, your deal is. I feel like a lot of, it's hard to describe exactly what I'll be getting out of the story until I talk to you. Um, but I would really love and appreciate it if someone would love to talk to me about something that they're doing. And um, my only requirement is this is kind of weird, but I can't really know you um, just because of, you know, conflict of interest. So if we are friends or if we are close, I am so sorry, but I cannot profile you because that is just a conflict of interest. But luckily with, you know, everything being virtual, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people who I haven't met in person and haven't talked to. So if anyone would love 
you know, to do that. Or if anybody knows anybody who would be interested, if you know a student filmmaker on campus that would want to talk to me, that would be great. And you can reach me at my email, which is up there, Jillian underscore Anderson at emerson.edu. And my phone number is also there if you'd just like to call me or send me a text. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you, Jillian. That's super duper awesome. Um, we love Jillian. She's been with Women in Motion for a while. Um, she's like our amazing member. And I think this would be a great opportunity, honestly, for anyone who really just wants to get their name out there a little bit more, talk about themselves, um, maybe like have a revelation while you're talking about what you want to do as a filmmaker. And you're like, wait, this is what I want to do. A good experience nonetheless. Um, awesome. Thank you, Jillian. Um, and then just last but not least, don't forget that the writers group is tonight at from 530 to 630. Kat will be leading it as always. If you haven't gotten an email, um, reach out to us at Women in Motion, reach out to Kat, and we look forward to seeing you there. So that is the end of our meeting. If any of you have any sort of questions, comments, I know this was like a really jam-packed meeting we had a lot going on went from one end to the other end talked about everything so if you have anything that you'd like to speak about please let us know um, but it was great to see you all and i can't wait for our next meeting and for our alumni event which is coming up very very shortly <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank have you. a good day um i wanted to talk to you guys about the board member